There we go. Hey, Ryan, glad hey, to have you. you. So I was talking with John, you know, a couple of weeks ago about this first ton thing. Um, and it sounds like he bought a ton of carbon from your company. Uh, and so I was hoping to hear a little bit more about that. What, um, can you tell me like what, yeah, what happened? What's the story? Yeah, so, um, yeah, so John heard, or, or at least he was exposed to the idea of <laughs> the potential to, to purchase the first ton of a, of a carbon removal company, I guess, just by being part of, you know, the Air Miners uh, Slack channel. And I think he overheard that you were also interested in, in purchasing first tons of, of carbon removal companies. And I think he was kind of intrigued by the idea of that. And, you know, um, John being someone that's really into sustainability and he's been heavily involved in air miners and, um, you know, some of the programming and, and, and just part of the community overall. I think that really resonated with him. And, um, you know, he reached out and, and heard that we were potentially thinking about, um, you know, selling our first ton. And, from there, uh, you know, a conversation just started around, you know, what that might look like and just kind of brainstorming initially. And that really turned into a more kind of serious conversation around, uh, you know, the, the structure of that, what an agreement might look like, pricing, uh, we even got into MRV and those kinds of things, you know, kind of touching on some of his experience and, and expertise and he's working in kind of the MRV space currently. So we had you know, lots of lots of feedback, lots of insight around what that might look like. Interesting. From there, it really just turned into a you know a deeper conversation. Went from kind of Twitter DMs to email to kind of jumping on a few a few Zooms and um, you know culminated in him officially purchasing our first or pre-purchasing our first ton of of future carbon removal. So kind of this forward financing idea, uh, this pre-purchasing idea. Uh, similar to what you know, Stripe and the Frontier Fund is doing around pre-purchasing tons. Uh, so you know, we thought that was kind of interesting that we, you know, we can potentially do this ourselves. We might not need, um, you know, the marketplace middleman, or at least initially at this stage. So we thought that was kind of interesting. Me, me. I want to go. I want to dive in and go back to like. So you get this message from John. What's what's valuable for you about about this, whatever this message says. Yeah, I mean, as a as a pre-revenue early stage startup in this space that is, you know, gearing up to start fundraising, uh, the you know a prospect reaching out to you as the company mentioning that they'd be interested in purchasing the first version of your product is it just means everything. It really means the world to to an early stage uh, company. Um, that first sale is is massive, and, and if if it's a pre-sale, it, you know, we think it's even more important um, because it means that you know someone who thinks what we're doing is important enough and it's valuable enough where they're actually willing to pre-pay for it, even with a a delivery timeline that's still TBD and it could be several years years away. So. We're actually looking at it, or we've been considering it as, as even more valuable than um, you know a, a, a regular purchase. If we were actually ready to deliver, the fact that it's a pre-purchase is, is really really important. Um, you know, it flips us to kind of being a revenue generating company, which is really really important at this stage. It's it's really tough to get to revenue generation as a pre-seed uh, company that's still developing the technology, still hasn't raised any uh, funding yet. Well, actually, we haven't announced it publicly yet, but we just secured our first investor. Sweet. When's that going to be public? Soon. Uh, and if you want to post this. Okay, cool. That, that's fine. <laughs> Go for it. Um, nice. We're just not naming. Yep. Who yeah. So that's you go. part of it is at least public. Um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's valuable on a number of, of dimensions for us. Okay. So the fact that, you know, we can de-risk the market, we can show validation, we can show that there's, you know, customers out there that want what we're doing, that value what we're doing enough to prepay for it. These are non-dilutive funds that we have access to. We can actually use these funds to develop the technology, to 
to grow the company, to build the company. The funds are in, in escrow. So that was part of the, the agreement as well, that we wow. actually have access to these funds. You, you can almost, the way that we kind of structured the, the deal is essentially like a safe, right? I'm, I'm assuming most of your listeners are going to be familiar with what a safe note is in, in fundraising. It's, it's a safe, but instead of future equity in the company, it's future carbon removal delivery. SAFC. Cool. Yeah. Exactly. Safka. Safka. So you, you kind of, you know, uh, nice. it in that way, you, you could almost think of it like Kickstarter with the deliverable being the ton, right? Mm -hmm. With all the risk that also comes with an early stage um, technology company as well, right? So if, if for some reason we're unsuccessful, um, you know, there's no since we have access to the funds, there's no guarantee of refund or anything like that, which, which really unlocks, you know, this, this potential revenue stream for us that we, we actually weren't considering up, up until this point, right? The, the fact that, you know, these, we would have access to these funds to, to grow the company and um, that would be alongside any venture funding or grants. And you could kind of think of it as a grant. So we're kind of thinking, thinking of it as a grant with a deliverable attached to it that we certainly plan on, on delivering on, right? So we're operating under the assumption of, of success here. Nice. So it sounds like this is kind of like a superfood sort of thing. It's, I'm hearing like it's, it's de-risking uh, your, your kind of customer discovery a bit. Uh, it's, it's kind of de-risking and validation. Uh, it's showing that you have at least one person that's crazy enough to buy a ton from you. It's non-dilutive. Uh, you get access to the, the money right now. Uh, is there anything, any other benefits to this? Uh, I mean, all of that leads into help with fundraising as well. So investors are going to see that, you know, we're not only are we pre-selling, right? Um, we're all, we also have access to that funding as well. So I think investors are going to see that as valuable as a, as a non-dilutive uh, stream of, of financing, which would enable investors to, you know, maintain a larger ownership percentage, right? If we can raise a pre-seed round and maybe a seed, and then from there, most of the funding comes from pre-sales, that could be pretty valuable for, for VCs, you know, if we don't need um, follow-on rounds, or at least, yeah. you know, larger dilutive uh, follow-on rounds. How valuable was it for you to have sold this pre ton going into your investor conversation? Sounds like. Yeah that happened incredibly valuable right you know if you can at this stage investors are making a bet on the team uh, and they're also making a bet on just progress and traction right and i think the, the ultimate form of traction is sales and i think the ultimate form of sales is, is pre-sales um so it's been really really valuable the timing couldn't have been better for us um and oh. Yeah, you know, here's to, you know, I think at this point, we're hoping to do another 100 by the end of the year. So we're just starting to really consider this as a potential way to, to start bringing in some, some revenue. I think we, we want to work out the legal side of things a little bit more before we really go full steam ahead on this. But I think we, you know, we're off to a pretty good start with at least the agreement we've come up with to date. Tell me more about the, the revenue side, because one of the, I think one of the hesitations for teams that were thinking about this first ton stuff was, well, it's just, it, the numbers are really small. I don't know if you can talk about the, you know, price that you sold this ton for, but you know, how, yeah, how are you thinking about that as um, like the, the revenue side of it? I, I've heard that with, you know, with Kickstarter, one of the challenges is like, nobody makes money on the Kickstarter project. It's just, it's more about something else. Can you, how, what are you thinking about, about all that? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think, you know, the, the, uh, the draw with, with Kickstarter for, um, you know, whether you're the company that's, you know, launching a project on Kickstarter or whether you're the, the person supporting the project, it, it's really about you know, supporting the company at this, at the earliest stages and, you know, uh, kind of owning this early adopter, um, you know, me mentality. Right. And, and I think that resonates with, a lot of people, especially, um, you know, John, who was, you know, our first, our first buyer, but yeah, you're right. I mean, initially it, it's really tough to price your, uh, your crowdfunding campaign, right? Cause you're, you're really not sure on what you're 
actual costs are going to end up being. Sure. A lot of companies do end up, um, you know, having to eat those costs initially, right? You, you know, the the idea is that since you're pre-selling and you're getting these these kind of early adopters, that they would get a kind of a discount on your first batch or your first few batches of, of, oh. of product once it's ready, if if you can get it to the point of being commercially ready. That's the risk that you're kind of taking in, in a Kickstarter project or a crowdfunding project. It's um, you know, getting the, the product actually built and delivered. Yep. And typically, you know, uh, you end up coming in much, much more above your, your uh, uh, projected costs to, to get that done. So we're kind of operating under the assumption that the kind of the initial cost for ton now, per ton now is much lower than where we uh, expect to be, right? So kind of, I guess to, to explain that a bit better, if we were ready today to deliver a ton of carbon removal, we would be probably an order of magnitude above what we sold our first ton for, right? So at this stage, we're in the, call it in the, in the kind of $1,000 per ton ballpark. Uh -huh. And we sold our first ton in the, in the hundreds of dollars, right? So we're not way off, we're kind of within kind of ballpark, I call it order of magnitude lower is what we're selling for. So, the likelihood of us having to kind of eat the, the delta there is, is, is pretty high. So for us, the, the thinking around that is, you know, we want to reward early adopters. We want to reward the people that are supporting us initially. So we're not making any profit on it. It's, it's likely going to be the opposite. I think going forward into this campaign of, of being able to pre-sell, we have to dial in costs and prices to pre-purchasers in a way that will enable us to kind of stay afloat once we actually have to, you know, uh, build this out and deliver on those tons, right? We can't sell all of our tons for a few hundred dollars if the initial batch of, you know, call it 10,000 or 100,000 are going to be much more expensive. That's that could yep. be a disaster. So it's just, I think it comes down to just being able to, to weigh this uh, appropriately and kind of dial things in as as we progress and um, yeah that's kind of how we're thinking about it neat I love it um, we're at the time that we had scheduled but if you have a couple more minutes we have a I have another yeah, couple for sure but, okay cool. I'm super curious about the, uh, the the investor kind of thing that seems like whoa because it's yeah, some of these things are like if you can if you can smooth out the the process of getting your your getting investable, that seems interesting. Um, yeah, so there's a there's a thought there. Um, I mean, I'm I'm kind of thinking too. One one of the things that I know with John last time we talked was that a whole bunch of a bunch of buyers responded. They were like, "Hell yeah, sign me up first time." I think we had like seven or eight. Uh, people to just respond to my email that said like, oh yeah, $250 per ton, I'm in. Yeah. Um, and on the company side, the response was a little bit different. People were kind of like, I'm not sure I want to do this. Is this, is this charity? Uh, you know, does this, you know, are we, are we kind of, you know, does this send things off on, in the wrong direction? How, did you, did you have any concerns like that when, when you got this message from, from this person? I mean, you know, ideas and thoughts go through your head, you know, how are we going to do this? How are we going to structure it? What are the legal ramifications of this? You know, have there been other previous attempts at this that we can model? Um, you know, and that's, that's where kind of the, the Kickstarter and the safe kind of idea all came into play. Mm -hmm. and, you know, Frontier and Stripe have, have done this before. They kind of consider their pre-purchases at the earliest stages, essentially to be a grant, like a research and development grant. With kind of the hope that the the companies uh, deliver on those tons eventually, but if they don't, then it's it's kind of you know it's, it's looked at more of a grant. So we the idea was to kind of model it off of that. And yeah, I mean, there's there's you know concerns, and you wonder how we can do this. But I think you just gotta um, just kind of trust your gut. You gotta jump on these kinds of opportunities. You gotta risk things. Um, you know, I think our thinking is, hey, let's let's do this. And as the agreement develops or as we progress as a company, we can kind of tweak and dial things in and kind of adjust course. I think if you worry too much 
And if, if you know, you don't want to let kind of fear and worry stop you. Sure. In the beginning. It's just, let's just go for it. And we'll just kind of adjust course as needed. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of, you know, keep at least John up to date on our progress as we develop. And also we, we also agreed to if, you know, any, any additional legal updates were to develop, you know, over the course of the next, you know, few months or a year that we would kind of sit down and maybe rehash out our, our agreement that um, falls more in line with something that's, uh, you know, really acceptable sure. and more, um, I guess, more official. But we think we did a pretty good job to date, despite it only being kind of a one pager kind of agreement. Cool. Are you up for sharing that one pager? Is that something that's public or uh, if people are interested or? Yeah, I think potentially um, it's it's in a kind of a draft state right now, but I think yeah. we'd be open to circulating that and just being as transparent as possible with, um, you know, uh, kind of what we're doing. You know, yeah. we want to be on the, these public leaderboards like CDR, FYI, and yeah. you know, other kind of uh, public trackers for, you know, tons sold and tons uh, delivered. So, yeah, I think we're, we're definitely open to eventually – uh, making that agreement public. Neat. Hey, one last question. So you mentioned the uh, you're you're considering selling another hundred tons, and so at about two hundred fifty dollars or three hundred thirty three dollars in your case, that's about that's you know on the order of like thirty thousand dollars. What's what's valuable for you about those next hundred tons? Like if if one you know if if one person came along and said I'll take all hundred or a hundred one offs, what how are you thinking about like? the value of it for you? Yeah, I mean, it's, again, it's incredibly valuable in, in the sense that it's, it's non-dilutive funding that we would have access to for further developing the technology, getting the technology to market, just operating it as a company at this size, uh, which is, again, incredibly valuable. At, at this stage, you, you really, at least, you know, in, in many companies' cases, you really only have kind of the team, the equity, the vision as far as kind of value and, and some early traction. So if we can bring in funding that's non-dilutive, that resembles more of a grant, that can be, you know, amazingly catalytic for companies of this stage. So, you know, 30K uh, from selling or pre-selling hundred tons is it's, it's, it's not only revenue, it's, but it's also additional market validation that we can leverage to raise any additional funding that, that we might need. Um, so it's really kind of this lead domino that just affects a number of downstream kind of parameters for us from kind of a validation standpoint and, and, uh, and a funding standpoint. Neat. I love it. Maybe I'll have a follow-up conversation with John to hear more about kind of some of the some of the details on his end that he was thinking about. Because last time we talked, it was kind of midway through. He was kind of in the process of, of making this purchase. Uh, this has been really helpful. Uh, you know, hearing about this from your perspective, how it's uh, you know validation, how it's non-dilutive funding, uh, how it's you know helping you get to the next stage of your company in terms of. The, the, the pitch to investors and helping you close this first round seems that seems really interesting. Um, yeah. Curious to see how this develops and uh, keep me posted if you, uh, or when you, you know, start thinking about that next hundred, those hundred tons. It will do for sure. No, this has been great, Tito. I really, really appreciate it. All right. And you've got your, uh, your launch pad pitch coming up in an hour. So yeah. uh, we're wrapping up the, the fifth batch. So I'll see you there. See you there, Tito. It's been a pleasure working with you and the rest of the team. Yeah, this is good stuff.